Do you remember when I made this omnidirectional robot with ball-shaped wheels that can move in any direction? Well, at the time, loads of people said I should make one big enough for me to ride on. So today, we're going to make a wheel just like this, but much bigger. The original concept for this wheel was based on a project from Osaka University. The wheel is an omnidirectional wheel, normally these have smaller wheels around the circumference of a bigger wheel, and I've done quite a few omni wheel projects in my channel. In this case though, it's a ball. The wheel is split into two hemispheres which can rotate freely and independently. This allows the wheel to be driven actively in one axis and passively in the other. There's only one small issue though, which is what happens when the active axis is driven so the peak of the hemisphere touches the ground, because the hemisphere can no longer rotate. For that reason, there's a little wheel in the top of the hemispheres. This does limit ground clearance when the wheel is in this position, but this is no worse than a standard omni wheel with little wheels around its circumference. The probability of driving on the little wheel for any length of time is also pretty small, so for now we'll live with that part of the design. When I made the small version of the project, several people commented to ask if the little wheel could be replaced with another ball caster. It's quite important though, just like a normal Omni wheel, that the little wheel can rotate in one direction, otherwise the wheel would slip at this point when it's being driven by the motor. But now we need to make a massive version. I considered 3D printing the whole thing, and although there is 3D printing in the project, I decided to make the main hemispheres out of CNC plywood. So as you can see we've got an interlocking structure where the fins interlock with the layers of the cake as it were. So I've put one of those in with glue and then I'm just sort of dry fitting the others to get everything square so the glue sets straight and then I go round and take out the fins and re-glue them again to make sure everything is square. And we've got 14 fins and in total I believe there's 6 layers, you can see 5 there and there's a little one we'll talk about in a minute which holds in the bearing. There's also screws that hold the fins into the bottom so that should pull the glue in nice and tight and once we've got one or two of those we can go and fit all of the other fins. And the whining sound you can hear in the background is the CNC making the other one because of course we need two. So that's the last one there which of course gets screwed in the bottom like all of the others and that gives us two complete hemispheres. Yes I've painted them silver and I've painted the undersides and I've painted the backs as well. I quite like the effect, it looks a bit like galvanised steel. But I don't really want to ride on wood because I think it will just splinter. So I've got this edging which is a really tough rubber edging with a kind of harpoon thing on the sides. So I'm going to fit that to all of the edges that I can. I was considering gluing it on but it's pretty tough stuff and it's hard enough to push on as it is so hopefully it will stay there, especially as I'm going to be driving on it. And you'll notice I've left these little gaps in the layers so that that fits nicely and then I can put the small pieces in between all the way around. So I fitted that all the way around to both of the hemispheres which took quite a while to get all the lengths perfectly right but hopefully that will give me a much better driving surface. I quite like the look of those, I think it looks pretty industrial, it doesn't look like wood anymore so that's pretty good. Obviously I haven't covered the peak of the hemisphere so you can still see the wood there that's been painted silver but we'll talk about that later in the video. For now though we need to make an axle to make these hemispheres fit on and spin independently and since I'm riding on it I decided to make it all out of box section steel. I had some in stock that's been in my shed for a while so I cleaned all the rust off before welding it and we're going to have one axle which is going to be 5025 box section steel and two shorter axles which are 5050 box section steel and those are the ones that the hemispheres are going to be mounted on which of course are mounted on bearings. I did actually do quite a bit of TIG welding a couple of years ago but most of the stuff's been packed away during the pandemic until I got a workshop again which I'll talk about in a future video. Every TIG weld I do seems to be better than the last one so I probably just need to practice a bit more. 
But even though it's not terribly pretty, I don't think they're too bad for not having done much for a couple of years, and they're definitely going to be strong enough and sound enough to hold my weight. We need to make some forks to hold the small wheels on the end of these axles. So I've got some holes drilled in both the axles and some metal plate that's going to help me with that. I mentioned there was still some 3D printed parts in this project and there's quite a few parts to hold the bearings and keep everything aligned. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. These parts are just PLA, but the way I've designed it is that they're just for alignment and they don't take much load, although I've actually made skateboards out of PLA which I can ride on. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. And also thanks to Simply Bearings at simplybearings.co.uk for all of the bearings for this project which are fairly large and substantial. So my 3D print is pretty much an aligner for the two bearings and then I've got the metal which is fitted in with a peg that goes all the way through metal to metal. And that's where I'm going to put the little wheel that's on the end which in my case is a 71mm longboard wheel. So those are my two axles facing each way with the two bearings for each hemisphere. We just need to drill some holes in the end of those forks to mount the wheel in just the right place so it peaks over the end of the hemisphere. Yes, I still really need to get a drill press. So with the wheel mounted, the axle runs this way, the hemisphere rotates this way, but you can see the little wheel always stays aligned with the axle, which is really important. And that wheel just pokes through the end of the hemisphere, so hopefully there's enough clearance there, and it can run on the wheel when we drive on the peak of the hemisphere. Now I'm doing a little hack here which is to weld a nut in place on each of those forks and I'm just doing a TIG welding job here. It's a stainless steel nut and it's mild steel so it's not the prettiest job and it's a bit sparky but essentially we've got a nut which is welded on. It's not welded on all the way round and that's because at the bottom it needs to rest on the bearing and that just stops that bearing pulling off the top. Now this whole thing disassembles which is quite important for assembling it so that I can put the hemisphere on and then put that red aligner on and pop the wheel on last. But once the peg is in place which goes in through the fins of the hemisphere everything is locked in place so those forks are locked to metal with the pin and the bearing can't pull off because of the nuts that I've welded on so the whole wheel is held in place. Once the wheel is on that bearing is constrained within the wood and the 3D print is constrained within the bearing. So hopefully with those forks which are loaded metal to metal with that peg to the 50-50 there's not too much load on that 3D print. So this end part I couldn't get the edging on without cutting massive slots in which pretty much cut through all the layers so the edges of the edging could fit because this gets shallower and shallower as we get to the peak of the hemisphere. So I actually 3D printed this TPU cap I haven't taken all the support material out, but that's designed to fit between these sort of fingers or the fins at the top here to make this a bit more robust. However, it does reduce clearance quite a bit and it's quite important we've got clearance on this wheel so it works. So for now, I'm going to leave this off. I think what we'll do is just drive on the wood, see how badly it gets carved up and eventually I'll probably replace these with some metal strips or some CNC aluminium parts or something else that's a bit tougher. So this works exactly like an omni wheel where the driven axis is that piece of steel I'm holding that will be motorised. So it's driven in that axis but it can slide in the other axis because those hemispheres can spin freely. And when they run to the peak of the hemisphere they run on the skateboard wheel. So that basically takes up the slack where the hemisphere wouldn't otherwise rotate. So that seems to move pretty freely and I think it's going to work okay and be strong enough. My only concern is that the load of the whole wheel when the vehicle and me is resting on top of it is basically resting on one bearing and that's inserted into the base of the wheel and that is only held in with another layer of plywood which is glued on. Hopefully it will be strong enough. What I really want to do of course is put a thrust bearing in between the axle and the base of the wheel but even though my bearings are sponsored by Simply Bearings, those things are pretty expensive and I need six of them. So we'll drive it as it is, and then if it breaks, we'll go back and ask Simply Bearings if it's okay to get six of those bearings. 
So we've got one wheel, but what we actually need to do to make a vehicle I can ride on is make at least three of them and put them 120 degrees apart from each other, like the original small version. It's quite a lot of effort to make one of these in a one week video. And it's even more effort to make three in a one week video. Yes, they're really here. It's not clever editing. I've actually made six hemispheres and three of these, which I've been making all along throughout the whole video. So next time we can put them on the vehicle and test it. So if you like this video, then don't forget to like it and subscribe. If you'd like to support me through YouTube channel membership or Patreon, then basically patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early. So if it's all going according to plan, patrons and YouTube channel members have already seen the next video, otherwise there'll be an update as to what went wrong. So you can check those links out in the video description. All right, that's all for now.